Okay, what's up Gethsemane family? For the fourth time, I'm going to try and do this video. Really hope I don't disconnect this time. Um, I know you're used to seeing Kevin on these Tuesday nights, but um, I get to do it tonight and I just think that I get to do it twice because I got so much out of Pastor John's message um, that they're going to let me do this. So I hope that this video doesn't get paused. Um, this video should already been done, but I am believing and hoping that God will let me get through this one without my phone disconnecting. So if you would, with me, just bow your heads and close your eyes, and uh, we will um, we'll pray together real quick. Um, so God, I thank you right now for, for who you are. I thank you that you have blessed us with today. I thank you that you have blessed us with uh, with, with air in our lungs, God, and, and um, a kick in our step. God, I thank you just for, for all the blessings, God. I thank you that that you you um, have 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 unlocked your promises um, to us, Jesus. I, I thank you right now that you uh, that you hold the world in your hands. You hold all of our worries, God. That you that you um, just provide everything we could ever need and and more abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I really hope I'm still on here. Um, we'll see, but uh, I'll get started anyway. Um, so don't stop believing. I've been, we've been on this series for a while. Um, the, one of the things that Pastor John said that caught my attention on Sunday was uh, the, the key to unlock the promises of God are, is, is to not stop believing. That's how you unlock his promises, right? So if you can, if you can just keep believing through your circumstance, whatever it is, whether, whether you're on the mountaintop or you're in the valley low, Right, God, God is there through it all. Yeah, He, He's, He's with you on your most blessed day, and He's still with you when you feels like here He's nowhere to be found. Right, when, when you, when you feel like you're trying to touch the throne room in prayer, He is still there. And when you're in those moments when you feel like, when you feel like there's nothing that's going right, and 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 all hope is lost, that that you 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 still have to keep believing to call on the name of God. You still have to keep believing that He can answer, that He can provide, that He can that He can alter whatever circumstance it is to to, to better you to um, so that you can to, so that you can get with it. Um, whether it take a longer time or take a quicker time, just don't stop believing that He's going to get you through it. Right. Um, the next thing I thought John said that was really good is hope sees promise as reality and faith gives it substance. And then shortly after he said that, he, he said that faith is not a time frame, right? He, faith is not, not, is having faith is not, um, having faith for only a certain amount of time or believing that God can do something only in a certain time frame, right? If you're believing for something in your life, don't stop believing for that thing, right? Don't stop believing for the promises of God. If you stop believing, it's going to be hard for you to unlock those promises, okay? Um, so if you, have, if you have faith, keep having faith even if the, the thing that you're asking God for is not answered or is not addressed as quickly as you would like it to, right? I, if, I, if I ask, if I want a million dollars, I'm going to have to work hard for a million dollars. And if I have faith, right, all the faith in the world that I'm going to make a million dollars in two days and it doesn't happen, does that mean I just stop believing for it? Does that, does that mean I just stop working for it? No, it means I work harder. It means I work longer. It means I do what I have to do. I have the faith that I have to have in God to make sure I can get to my goal, achieve my goal, get to my expected end, right? Um, that was kind of a weird example, but you get what I'm trying to say. Um, another thing God said, I'm not even sure if I'm still connected here, but if you're watching this, let me know that I'm connected here and comment on there, say something or whatever. Um, but when we don't see, this is something else John said in the Sunday morning uh, message. When we don't see, or when we don't see in faith with God, God is still faithful to us. So God is still faithful all the time. And I wanted to quickly give a short um, story about my personal life um, that, that, that proves the faithfulness of God through, through what seems like the toughest times. So when I was in sixth grade, when I graduated sixth grade, um, thank you for that like, so I know I'm on here. Uh, when I graduated sixth grade, I, uh, um, or when I moved on, you don't really graduate from sixth grade. When I moved on from the sixth grade, I lived in Lowell, Indiana. That is in the Chicago area, uh, we'll say. And so 
um, when when I moved when I when I when I got done with sixth grade, I moved from Lowell, Indiana to Evansville, and my dad was a pastor up there. Um, this was the very first church that I remember being a part of. I don't remember being a part of a, a, any other church before this one that I was at, Lowell First Assembly of God. Um, and I, I loved that church. We were there for 10 years. I, I poured my heart into that church. My dad did the same thing. And we, when I got done with sixth grade, we had to move, right? We moved the summer of uh, the, the summer from sixth into the seventh grade year. And my, when my dad told me that I was devastated. I did not want anything to do with, with, with life. I didn't want anything to do with God. I didn't want anything to do with anything, right? I just wanted, you know, to, to turn all the lights off, turn the world off and just be me and just not worry about anything. Cause I was so mad. I was so bitter that I had to leave my friends, that I had to be part of a new school. I had to, you know, find my new basketball team and, and do all those kinds of things. And, and I, I, had, I was playing AAU basketball with, with my buddies, the guys I grew up with, a coach by the, you know, the, the, some of the best coaches. And it was, it was great. I had a maid in, in Lowell, Indiana, and we lived in a great house and we had a great thriving church. And everything seemed so awesome. Um, and then we moved to Evansville, Indiana, and my dad took a church down here, Cornerstone Assembly of God. And I did not want to be in Evansville. I did not want to be in Cornerstone. The only thing I think I could think about was Lowell. And I was devastated. And I and I asked God, I, I, I said, why is this happening? What? Why are you doing this to us? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you taking away, me away from my friends? Why are you taking my dad away from his church? What are you doing here? And and we we got to Evansville and it was it was my life was turned upside down. Like I was the new kid at school. Like I had to get used to the school and I had to get used to my new basketball team and, and I had to make new friends and that was really, really hard. And and we when I was in Lowell, we had a youth group of over two hundred kids. Over two hundred teenagers youth group, right? And then I get to this new church and there was two. There was two youths besides me and my two brothers. And I was like, this is not low. I was like, this is, this stinks. And, and, um, you know, down the road, God was showing me things and God would open doors for me to, 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 and he would, he would show me new blessing and, and he would have to, I would have to go through some, through some things to realize that I cannot stop believing in God just because my circumstance seems to change in my, in the spiritual, in the physical realm. Um, I, I, I have to change my, my thought process that, you know, the way I think about something. Um, so my spirit man can get, can still access the things of God, the things that he has for me, whether that be in Lowell or whether that be in Evansville, or whether it be on the mountaintop or whether that be in the valley. So I could not stop believing just because my circumstance was different. Right. And that's what I got out of, uh, John's message on Sunday. That's what, that's what, um, that's what hit the nail on the head for me when he said that. So I hope you got something out of this video. You guys be blessed, uh, be safe. And I can't wait to see you on Sunday. Love you guys.